How's it going? I am not in my house. Hallelujah. It's been raining for the majority of the month of February, but now that we're in March, look at that. Barely a cloud in the sky. The weather's great. I'm here in Roswell, Georgia with my buddy Jeremy, and look, we got our sidekick, Fry, right here. So what we're going to do today is we're going to take a stroll through Roswell, Georgia, maybe talk a little bit about the history, and maybe talk about some of the spooky ghost stories that are associated with this town. Now, the weather is not <laughs> not right for some ghost stories, but I couldn't waste a gorgeous day like this sitting in the house. So we're gonna go all over Roswell today and talk a bunch of stuff. Ready? Let's go. The town of Roswell, Georgia was founded by this man, Roswell King. He was the founder of the village which bears his name, a man of great energy, industry, perseverance of rigid integrity, truth, and justice. He early earned and long enjoyed the esteem and confidence of his fellow men. Well, we're going to talk a little bit more about Roswell King, but before that, let's start walking towards one of the spots we're going to look at. The first stop on our walking tour today is going to be Bullock Hall, which is right all the way down that road. But on our way down there, I'm going to tell you a little bit more about Roswell King. Now, I said earlier that Roswell King is the founder of the town, obviously, because it's Roswell, Georgia. Roswell King came all the way up from Georgia's coast and settled in the area. He actually saw that the landscape was rife for a nice little town, and so he went back to the coast, and he convinced a whole bunch of well-to-do families to move up here and kind of start this mill around this little landscape. And we'll go to the mill, and we'll go to one of the, uh, the rivers right next to the mill, so you can kind of see where uh, his idea became uh, into fruition. But one of the main families that came with them was the Bullock family. So let's go check out Bullock Hall. Before we get to Bullock Hall, I do want to point out this building right here. It's what's called the Little White House here in Roswell, Georgia. And that is because Jimmy Carter's aunt lived at this house. And supposedly, supposedly, I'm not 100% sure, that it was this house where he decided he was going to run for president. And I believe that conversation took place in this room right here. Not 100% sure, but that's what the stories say. This house right here belonged to a man by the name of Major James Stevens Bullock. Now he moved up here from the Georgia coast uh, with his second wife. What's really interesting is that out of everything that's inside this home, there's only one original piece that was owned by Major James Stevens Bullock. And the irony is that he didn't own it when he lived here. It was actually a piece that he owned when he lived on the Georgia coast. And it's actually a portrait of his first wife who never came up to Roswell, Georgia. Now Bullock's second wife was named Mitty. That was really her, her nickname. Her, her real name was Martha. And he loved her so much that he built this 
giant extravagant front yard, which is what you see behind me uh, for her. And I'm walking on this dirt road that kind of goes up and around the house. And he loved her so much that he actually made it into a heart shape at one point in time. So we're gonna see if we can take a bigger look at this heart shape. Check it out. Over the years up here, it's actually kind of worn down, but you can see how it comes around and goes to a point right here and comes back up and around right here. So that way, whenever Mitty Bullock was sitting in the window up front, which I'll take you guys here in a second, she would see the giant shape of a heart in her front yard. Now, there is a story, I cannot confirm if it is true or not because there is no documentation of how a very young slave child fell down the well. And it is said that her spirit still kind of walks around the premises here at Bullock Hall. Again, there's no documentation saying that there was a slave child that died in the well. But that's one of the stories associated with this area. One of the claims of some kind of paranormal activity that's going on in Bullock Hall has to do with the two lights right under the porch. Uh, it is said that whatever spirit is here it tends to be a little bit mischievous and likes to turn the lights on and off in a very rapid manner, just kind of flickering. Nothing, nothing harmful, maybe a little bit more playful, just to kind of get you to know it's there. Not sure who it is, that's what's been claimed here. Another ghost story associated with Bullock Hall has to do with that window and the top there. And years ago, there was a lady who would be running through here. And this house is, it's unoccupied. It's, it's a historic house museum. So the lady would jog at night right through this path right here. And she would see a family looking out from the top window right there at her jog. And again, no one lives here. Who's that family? Now, again, it is a historic house museum. It's closed after 4 p.m., 5 p.m., something somewhere around there. So, shouldn't be anybody in that house. But yet, an entire family staring at the jogger? Who knows? Check out this view. Ah, this is, this is really nice. And here is one of the main people we're talking about today, Roswell King and his son Barrington King. And they actually helped build that mill right there. One of the main reasons that Roswell King decided for this area to be a mill town is because of this creek right here. It's now called Big Creek. It was historically known as Vickery Creek. And Vickery Creek right here actually flows into the Chattahoochee River. So he was able to get materials in and out of the area. And as you can see, it flows right by the mill. There's another one of these old buildings here for the mill, right down that way. And we're gonna go take a closer look. There's a huge piece of machinery left over down here. I don't know if you guys can see it because of the, the glare and the sun. Let me see if I can zoom in. Here's another angle from the piece of machinery that we were just looking at. And right here, you can see the remnants of an old chimney. Ah, there's some more pieces. This old piece of machinery from the old mill here. We're kind of around the back now. It goes all the way up here. And there's that other piece that we were looking at a second ago, and there's that stack that's right here. Check out that waterfall. That is amazing. That is really nice. I don't know why I'm getting excited about a waterfall, but there it is. Look at it. Behold. Part of an old structure here, the old mill. But uh, what do you guys think lives in that little that little area right there you think it's a monster and you think it's like what pennywise pennywise
right here is the old Roswell mill. It's a textile mill. This is actually where they used to produce the Confederate gray uniforms for the Confederate Army. Not the entire Confederate Army, part of it, obviously. You can't supply the entire Confederate Army with just one small building, but it was a textile mill. And whenever all of the men were away fighting the war, the American Civil War, war between the states, war of northern aggression, whatever your point of view is on the, on the Civil War, uh, the women were working here in the factory. When William Tecumseh Sherman was making his march all the way to Savannah, he actually passed through Roswell. And if you're familiar with Civil War history, Sherman was not very kind to the towns that he visited. He went through and burned everything to the ground, especially Atlanta. Atlanta had a, a really hard time rebuilding during the Reconstruction Age, but he did pass through Roswell, and he did burn down a lot of places. However, one place that he did not burn down was this mill. Why he didn't burn down the mill, I'm not 100% sure, but I have heard stories, and I have not had any documentation or confirmation on this, but William Sherman, or Tecumseh Sherman, was a mason, and it's also said that the person who ran the mill was also a mason. So out of masonic respect for his fellow mason, he didn't burn it down. Now again, if that story is true, I'm not 100% sure, but that's the story I've been told. Now there's nothing really haunted or paranormal about the old mill uh, and where it, its location is. Uh, however, I wanted to take you guys there because it is a very, very important piece of Roswell, Georgia history. If this mill wasn't built, there's a very good chance this town would not exist anymore. But if this mill wasn't built, there's a very good chance that this town just simply wouldn't exist. <laughs> it's the problem with walking down hills is that you have to walk back up them. And the, when you're very out of shape, like us. Rounds of shape, yeah. right? Yeah. Not a good one. I mean, I guess unless you're like a ball. Yeah, then you can just roll. Well, you'd be rolling down again. I don't know where we're going with this. I don't know either. The old bricks. These are said to be the first ever townhomes in the United States of America. Let's take a closer look. The buildings right behind me used to be homes for some of the people who lived in the area that worked at the cotton mill that we saw earlier in this video. During the American Civil War, it was turned into a hospital to house Confederate and Union troops who were battling in nearby areas. After it was a hospital, went back to living quarters for a little bit, and then it was kind of turned into some kind of banquet hall right down here. Uh, it since has changed hands many, many times over. It's been renovated and re-renovated, but right now they're known as the old bricks, and they've been converted back into townhomes. During its tenure as a banquet hall, people who worked here experienced a lot of odd things going on, like plates being out of place and knives and forks being moved. Uh, one time somebody went to set the table and pushed all the chairs in to the, under the table and whenever they left the room and came back momentarily all of the chairs were pulled back out from under the table. Another popular story with the old bricks has to do with a little child. Now I'm not certain which unit it is. However, the story is said that there's a little child, a little girl, that haunts one of the places here. She's very friendly. You only see her out of the corner of your eye. And she's not necessarily mischievous, but she does like to play a joke or two every once in a while. Historic Founders Cemetery. An original cemetery here 
in Roswell, Georgia, and we're going to learn why it's called Founders Cemetery. It's called Founders Cemetery because the founders of Roswell are buried here. So, ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce you to Roswell King. As I'm panning over the entire area of Founder Cemetery, you can see the gate is over here, kind of stretches around, and we walked up right over here. You guys can see it's not very big, but every stone here represents a gravesite or what is believed to be a gravesite. Very interesting story about this place is that. These were not the original confines of Founders Cemetery. It's actually much bigger, but if you look behind me, you see it's a residential area this way and this way. So at some point, the area of what was Founders Cemetery was sold off to house developing companies or house developers in the area, and they slowly started to build over what was the original cemetery. There are stories of people who've had to do house repairs and when they're in their basement digging up the concrete and all of the dirt, they have found human remains. You'll notice that there are a lot of very small graves all around Founders Cemetery. That's because there are unfortunately the graves of children. There was a very high mortality rate for children in the 19th century in this area. And they were they would succumb to sickness very easily. Now one of the stories, or one of the ghost stories I should say, that's associated here with Founders Cemetery is that of a very playful spirit who is said to be seen in the trees. I've never seen her. I've heard stories of people seeing her. I don't know if it can be believed, but it's a little girl who can be seen in the trees and who likes to play. She likes to throw acorns at people. Could it just be acorns falling from the tree? There's a very good chance that that could be the case. Uh, but what's really interesting is that the little girl who is described as being seen in the trees is also said to be the same little girl that we saw, or we talked about, down the road at the old bricks. We are in this, walking up that hill. 